Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malicote. I work for KTVU Fox 2 here in the San Francisco Bay Area. My guest is the mother of four on the peninsula, a little south of San Francisco. They are all being homeschooled right now. They're all athletes as well. And oh, by the way, she's also a volleyball coach for a club team. Uh, she's also very active in a movement called Let Them Play here in California. Let's say hi to Heather Book. Good morning. Good morning, Frank. Uh, you're a busy lady. <laughs> yes, been very, very busy, especially the last six weeks. I bet. Understatement there in a big way. Uh, well, let's put on the mom hat first. What's it like homeschooling kids? What's the, the year been like? Uh, uh, I mean, yeah. it's been a little crazy. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, for us, our kids are actually uh, middle school through high school. So, so they're not real little, uh, but that comes with its own challenges. You know, my, my daughter was uh, is a freshman in high school this year. And so starting a year, starting at a new school, your freshman year of high school, when you don't get to go to campus, you don't get to have that first day, you don't, don't get to have any of those normal experiences of starting high school and, and you know all that brings going to the Friday night football games, meeting other students. Uh, it's been very tough. These kids are really isolated. Um, everything they love, sports, of course, we're talking about here is, has been taken away from them. So it's, it's been a very difficult year. And, and are the kids just at the end of the rope? Have they had it? I, I think they are at the end of the rope uh, with doing Zooms and doing online school and uh, having to, um, you know, never being able to see their friends. Um, so, yeah, I think there are days when, when they uh, just really can't be online anymore. They're tired of their computers. And I've had to say a number of times, hey, if we just, if we just have to, to not do school today, take a mental health day, that's what we're going to do because it's, um, yeah, it's really tough. And are they learning? Are they, are they soaking all this up or is it, you got to get back in the classroom. That's the bottom line. I think it's very difficult. My seventh grader in particular finds it very difficult to stay focused and engaged uh, when you're just sitting on Zoom all day long and watching. You, know, you feel like you're basically watching. It's like, you know, we're putting our, our kids in front of screens for six, seven hours a day. Um, it, it's hard to learn when you're doing that. Well, on top of school, sports have basically been canceled in California for uh, youth sports. Uh, dance, high school sports, everything. And, uh, and that's tough. I, get, what, how, I know you're part of this movement, let, let them play. Uh, give our viewers an idea what that's all yeah. about. And where California sports in terms of high school and youth sports sit right now. Sure, so let them play is, is really a, a Facebook group, started as a Facebook group. Uh, so a lot of parents um, and some coaches started organizing a Facebook group and, and talking about what, what we can do to try and bring sports back for our youth. And in a matter of weeks, the Facebook group grew to over 60,000 members. We have over 60,000 members today on that Facebook group. Uh, the, also, we also started a foundation. So 501c3 foundation. And um, there were a couple of football coaches early on, Coach Gladnick and, and Coach Walsh. Uh, some viewers may have seen them on TV, but it really drove the movement. There were two fall sports in particular at risk. So volleyball, um, you know, sport I care about, that's a fall sport for girls and football, fall sport for boys. So uh, those, those are two, you know, the biggest fall sports. And I think the parents, coaches who were seeing that our hopes for having a season were slipping away quickly in January, um, you know, decided to mobilize. Last Friday, we got um, new guidance from the state, which allowed football and water polo, which were orange to your sports, to go ahead and start playing and competing, even in the red and purple tiers that most of the counties in California are in today. Uh, but volleyball um, was actually moved further back into the yellow tier. So right now, under the guidance in California, volleyball can't be played unless our case rate is one per 100,000, which we've never been since the, the pandemic has started. And we look around and other states across the country have been playing volleyball safely with case rates at, you know, 29, 30, much, much higher. But it's hard to understand why the rules are so different in California. Well, and you guys are fighting back. You went from let them play to let them play 
indoors. Indoor. And uh, so the last week and a half, some lawsuits have been filed against counties in the state of California. And there was a successful one in San Diego that kind of got the movement over the hump. Uh, right. Tell us about that and what lies ahead. Sure. So the, the first lawsuit that was filed in San Diego, the plaintiffs were actually two football players. And the judge ruled, uh, actually granted a temporary restraining order against the state. And the final ruling in that case is set for Friday. So uh, the temporary restraining order uh, essentially said that uh, kids' youth sports should be able to go ahead with the same protocols as college sports are being played in this state. So that applies to all of San Diego County. The rest of the counties didn't have that restraining order or that sort of protection. So um, that the, the lawsuits that you mentioned, you know, we've subsequently filed, I think seven or so lawsuits in different counties on that same basis. And, and uh, to your point really now with the new guidance, now we're really arguing for uh, at indoor sports. Um, and we have a lot of data that shows that indoor sports can be played safely. And the clock is ticking too, because there's not a lot of time left in the school year, right? That's right. Well, and, and in California, where the, the, you know, the CIF actually gets to set the end date for each sport, uh, volleyball end date is set for, in, in a lot of sections, it's set for early April, uh, actually even earlier than football, April 3rd. So we've got a few weeks left, really. And, uh, you know, we're, we're really hopeful that CIF is going to be reasonable and work with us if we're able to get, uh, you know, get favorable rulings in these cases and come, come to some agreement with the state. Um, you know, we're hopeful that CIF is gonna work with us and allow for all sports to have an equitable season. And what lies ahead? Are you feeling good about these lawsuits and about getting volleyball? And tell us about your background too, because you're yeah. a volleyball player, a college, a club coach. This is something near and dear to your heart. Yeah, I think we're feeling hopeful right now. It's the first time in a long time. I think there's been a, a lot of, um, I, I, you know, um, people were feeling very, very hopeless when the new guidance came out and volleyball was pushed further back into the yellow tier. It was a real gut punch, I would say, for, for us, you know, volleyball families, volleyball parents. And you know, we mobilized, we put together our indoor group, as you mentioned, and filed multiple more lawsuits. And since then, I think we're getting some more movement with the state. So I think we're feeling hopeful for the first time again, you know, in a long time. Uh, I think also when we look at the, the uh, ruling in the San Diego case, uh, it was a pretty strong, favorable ruling. The judge said that the state did not bring forward any evidence that, um, college sports are sort of inherently safer than youth sports. And 250 college volleyball games have already been played by California teams. So when you look at those two facts, we feel pretty good about, about our case, about our lawsuits and, and the progress that we're making. Um, you asked about my background, sorry. Go for it. Yeah, so yeah, I've coached volleyball for a long time. I started coaching in 1994. I started coaching uh, high school girls. I've coached a number of high schools. I've coached a number of club teams. I've really been a volunteer coach for a number of years here in the Bay Area. And I really, uh, you know, it's not my full-time job. I don't, I'm not trying to make a name for myself. I really do it for the kids. Um, they always talk about science behind this. We're going to follow the science. And uh, you had sent me a graphic that I can paraphrase, but it basically showed the states uh, in terms of volleyball that have been playing since the fall. I think there were 38 of them uh, all playing, and the average was about 19 cases per 100,000. Uh, and a lot of them were in the 20s, some even in the 30s. California currently has about 13 cases per 100,000. And right now the state is saying, you wanna play volleyball, get it below one. So basically eradicate it all together. Right. And that doesn't seem fair, right? Absolutely, it doesn't seem fair and, and uh, you know, the states that you referenced that have run volleyball seasons, they did that in the fall of 2020. And so there's been a lot of studies of sports now. We've had the benefit of watching a lot of other uh, states play sports. And uh, the University of Wisconsin has really led a lot of this research. And they found that the incidence rate for girls volleyball when they're wearing masks is the same or lower than it is for football. Uh, which is a sport that's being allowed to go ahead right now in California. So uh, it's not just that, you know, we know other states are doing it. 
is that we now have academic research and, and scientific studies validating that transmission is not happening on the court. Kids are getting COVID or people are getting COVID, they're getting it, they're getting it in their communities and not through playing sports. Can you talk about uh, as being a coach and a former player and the mother of, of children, uh, how important sports is uh, just for the development of so many things for a, for a, a young kid uh, growing up? Yeah, um, this, this is the part where it gets a little emotional. I, I uh, you know, my, I know what it means to my kids to play sports, to be able to compete, to practice. It has really shaped, uh, it's shaped our kids. It's helped them learn how to, uh, you know, persevere, to come back when they're down. I think so much that the, of the skills that they need to be successful in life, in, in business or wherever they're going to go in, in their in their future, they're actually learning through sports. Um, and, and just as a coach, I have, you know, the sort of the vantage point of, of, I've worked with a lot of kids and for some kids, uh, that maybe don't have a great home life or maybe don't have a lot of support in other areas of their life, their, their team, their, you know, their, their, their club, if, if they, they go to a club or their high school team, it's like their family. It is, it is really, really meaningful in, in terms of providing support for them and giving them a safe place and a place where they can grow and develop skills that help them be academically successful and professionally successful. Yeah, I'm an, not, yeah I, I was just going to say as an athlete in high school and college, I totally agree. I spoke to my 85-year-old wrestling coach yesterday. We were talking about this. He's like, let the kids play. Let them play. Um, yeah. I know your daughter's a freshman in high school. Is that right? That's right. And she's never stepped foot on the campus, right? No, actually, they have. Her high school has begun a hybrid learning, okay. so she has done a few weeks of of class. But a few weeks, I mean, come on, <laughs> your whole freshman year—that's that's got to be pretty tough. It's tough. I mean, I I know. Look, I I know the schools are trying. I know everyone's scared. I know everyone's trying to you know do their best to create safe environments, and and uh, we're absolutely grateful for what she's been able to have at her school the time she has been able to go to campus it's uh you know it's funny <laughs> it's like been christmas morning for our kids when their school announced they were going back in person you know you've never seen a kid so excited to go to school so we're grateful that she's been on campus but it, it kind of brings up this other question of if you can go and sit in class for six hours when the case rate is you know what it is today why can't you play a 40 minute volleyball game with a mask you know, with only six other kids. Right, right. Well, hopefully you'll get some answers soon. Uh, if people want to get in touch with you or get information or help out, how do they do it? Well, certainly uh, join Let Them Play, our Facebook group. And there's a lot of information out there. Again, I'm just one of, you know, 60,000 parents and, and volunteers. So uh, certainly start there. I'm very active in that Facebook group. So if you go there, you'll, you'll definitely find me. All right. She is uh, Heather Buck as we uh, switch around here a little bit. Hey, thank you very much. Thanks for sharing. And uh, hopefully we'll get your, uh, get your kids and all the kids back out on the athletic fields and, uh, and back into the classrooms very soon. Thanks so much, Frank. All right. I'm Frank Malico. If you'd like uh, more information, you can go to newsnowfox.com as well. Have a great day, everybody.